Why would someone want to use the oldest electronics technology for their music in this day and age? And how could it be relevant to you? In this review here on Stern Home Reviews, I compare the 7,500 euro Manly Stingray 2 and the 6,500 euro Audio Research i50. Both are American and both represent the respective company's entry models. I will give you my perspective on these modern integrated premium tube amplifiers, talk about the pros and cons, the sound, the quirks, their features, and try to find out who they are for. But first, this review has been made possible by the kind collaboration of Danish hi-fi reseller Top Sound in Copenhagen that supplied the Audio Research i50 and Danish Manly distributor Technify supplying the Manly Lab Stingray. Find links in the description below the video where you also find the Sonic Snacks playlist, the chapter index that allows you to skip segments you're not interested in and much more. You will get there by either tapping the little arrow at the playhead or tapping the little more button after the first few lines of the description underneath the videos. So explore and run wild down there. Listen. On the first day of Planet Audiophile, God created the tube. The invention of the transistor in 1947 opened the door to the information age as we know it, and thus tubes became merely a niche. And this is where we as audiophiles come in. Tubes are pretty inconvenient in many ways. They need to warm up before they perform their best. They typically wear out in a couple of thousand hours in an audio amplifier. They're also fragile and has an alarmingly low efficiency that transforms most of the power being pulled out of the power socket to heat instead of sweet music. Even at idle, they consume a lot of power. Nevertheless, the sound of tubes is special, which is why they have an audio file base that worships the tube. My own close-up and personal experience with tubes in hi-fi are actually quite limited. Something that will now stand corrected in this double review, featuring integrated tube amplifiers in the more serious end that should appeal to more by their feature sets, designs, and, and five-figure price tags. In today's world of smartphones, social media, tens of thousands of two-minute auto-tuned, soon likely even AI-generated songs are being published on streaming services every day, manifesting humanity's now five-second attention span and ongoing detachment from reality and nature. As a reaction, countercultures are forming. The return of vinyl is a good example of that. It has the power of bringing us closer to something that feels organic and alive with all the little rituals surrounding it all. The resulting sound reaching your ears carries so many individual factors all the way down to how that vinyl cover smells. <laughs> yes, believe me, a lot of memories can be sniffed from the inner sleeves of vinyl records. Tube amplifiers represents very much the same thing that can be in a certain mood depending on outside factors like ambient temperature, the power being fed to them, as well as the, the types and age of the tubes used. To me, it feels like the perfect partner to that vinyl counterculture. So what is it with the sound of tubes? Well. As a professional sound engineer, I consider tubes mostly as a color in the sound palette. Using tube-based microphone preamps and sometimes compressors, softening up the sound. Using a tube hi-fi amplifier, you are applying those characteristics, may they be subtle or extreme, to the entire signal. There have never been more choices when it comes to integrated tube amplifiers. I've picked two American-designed and manufactured amplifiers from re-owned companies with experience through many decades of designing tube amplifiers. The 7,500 euro Manly Stingray 2 is a 40-watt integrated dual monoblock amplifier from Manly Labs located in Chino, California, with, as you can see, a very unique shape that allows 
allows for maximum separation of the left and right channel. It makes it kind of cool and quirky all at the same time, but it also makes it take up a little more space on the review bench as the cables will be pushed out to either side, separating them nicely from each other. It offers both triode and ultra linear amplifier modes. It sits on spikes. It has a RF based remote control, four inputs where one of them is a modern world friendly mini jack for hooking up that phone or Bluetooth module. It also has separate unfiltered subwoofer outputs as well as a very cool loop insert functionality and balance adjustment. Users are allowed and encouraged to check the biasing of the tubes themselves. The amplifier even comes with a voltmeter, so you have all the tools necessary to check bias. The whole thing comes fully assembled out of the box. Wrong bias can lead to everything from excessive distortion to reduced lifespans of your tubes. So it is a thing worth checking once in a while. Reading the manual will tell you all you need to know about these guys. The manual, by the way, is one of the best I have read with lots of good advice about how to get the best sound from your system. Audio Research resides in Minnesota and has roots back to 1970 and is by some considered as one of the founders of today's high-end hi-fi world due to the founding father William St. Johnson insisting on tubes at a time where the transistor was taking over. I-50 is their first attempt at a modern integrated amplifier appealing to the counterculture hipster at a price point where more music lovers can participate. With the help of two optional modules, it can even be equipped with both an onboard DAC module and the MM phono stage. Like the Stingray 2, the i50 is digitally controlled and comes with a remote control. The two Pixie Tube style displays on the front is called Lexi Tubes and is simply a digital dot matrix style display showing input selection as well as current volume. When the amp is muted, it dims the display to indicate that. In the back, we find a balanced input as well as two RCA line inputs. RCA input 3 can also be used as a pass-through directly to the power amp. During operation, the tubes can get rather hot, so the amp is equipped with a protection grill that can be mounted for extra safety if you want. Uniquely, the i50, now without the grill, is available in six colors to match your style or mood. Very hip and an interesting fresh take on the tube amplifier concept. It is an item that draw you to it and like the Manly, it feels really well built. Neither of the amps here has any streamy or networky stuff built in. Here it's totally up to you to add the sources you want to listen to. For a great streamy networky solution, I would recommend something like the compact iFi audio streamer called the Neo Stream, providing all the streamy bits you could want in high quality, including Tidal Connect, Spotify, Airplay, Rune, and so on. But seriously, you know it can only be a supplement to that turntable and tape deck, providing the ultimate counter culture time escape bubble, right? <laughs> Let's start off with comparing the daily functionality of the two amps. When switching on the Audio Research i50, a warm-up countdown is started. 50 seconds to be exact. That should be enough time to find that reel-to-reel -reel tape, that CD or vinyl you want to hear, or to log into your favorite streaming service. Oh, and maybe get cozy slippers and a beer. The Stingray 2 goes about it a bit quicker and is uh, ready to play after just 15 seconds from pressing that blue standby power button in the front. On the left rotary dial, we can select uh, the source being displayed as uh, source 1, source 2, source 3, or BL for balanced. To use the pass-through function, you will select source 3 and press and hold the source selector to switch source 3 into a clean pass-through input to the power stage. This is a little quirky as it's only via the source 3 RCA input this is possible. A pass-through feature is not available on the Manly Stingray 2. 
Like the i50, the Stingray also uses the lift knob for source selection and has gone in quirkiness overload mode with the features presented via these uh, two turn and click knobs. It can be pretty hard to tell what source is selected from the little blue dots, which has also a little red dot indicator used to show if the amp is using the smart insert loop feature that is available. The insert can be a really powerful feature if you want to add say a tape machine or a external tone control, room correction system or any other processing to your Jubilicious setup. I hooked up a Linkdoor 3400 set up as a pass-through room correction processor via the loop. And the smart insert feature allows you to switch easily with absolutely no clicks or dropouts between listening with or without your device inserted in the signal chain. This feels very professional and can even be done from the remote control. Really cool and practical. Or how about inserting a good old graphic equalizer for that matter? Imagine that. Those are not so common in hi-fi anymore, but can be obtained in the professional market for small money. This is a DBX1231, costing less than 500 euros. So why not have some fun? The Stingray also features a lift-right balance control, something we don't get with the i50. Both amplifiers offer a headphone output that mutes the speakers when the jack is inserted. The sound of those headphone outputs I cover in the sound review. For remote control, we get a nice little sealed remote made from aluminium with the i50. It uses IR, so it has to be pointed. There are buttons for the optional DAC module as well. There's a little Bluetooth symbol there indicating that the DAC module might have this functionality. The remote sits well in the hand, but it never feels really satisfying due to the bubble style buttons. The Stingray comes with a huge backlit 90 self phone style remote then can be either RF or IR. You would only want to use IR if you have problems with some radio disturbance that affects the RF on the remote though. After coming down from the initial surprise of the design, I'm actually really enjoying this remote. It just works no matter how and where you use it. No line of sight is needed. We also find smart functions for controlling balance that resets the left-right balance to neutral with just one button press. We also have direct access to that smart insert so you can A-B listen to a recording three-head tape machine or use that graphics equalizer or room DSP when you want, even with the amp out of reach. It is a remote you will appreciate in the long run as a trusty appliance. I totally love it and it makes me smile every time I used it. All in all, the Manly comes across as influenced with a more professional thinking mindset with its click-free remote control insert feature, individually gainable inputs, the balance control and RF-based remote control. Only thing I really miss is a balanced input like on the i50 that also offers a more refined slickness with the possibility of the optional phono module and a DAC module for the most streamlined installation without any extra boxes to clutter your lifestyle. But here's the thing in relation to the price of at least 900 euros for this optional module. For this kind of money, you can get a great dedicated phono stage with balanced outputs supporting all cartridge types, as well as providing useful extra features and more competent sound for similar money. At the time of this review, I don't know the price of the upcoming optional DAC module, but I would expect it to be even more expensive than the phono module. If that is the case, more value could be had by adding a product like the iFi Audio Neo Stream that provides both a super high quality streamer and a DAC around 1300 euros and even has balanced outputs for the i50. In short, in my opinion, most users will be better off by adding their own phono stage solution with both these amps. And hey, it's definitely also much more fun finding that perfect phono stage match for your setup than having it built in. I think both these amps are very appealing in the design and they're both really satisfying to use. With the i50 creating a bit more sensification with the warm-up countdown and cool lecture tubes. To me, the i50 has the most modern day slick hipster feel while the manly feels more professional. 
After looking at the design and the feature of both, it's time for me to report on my impressions of the sound experience. I've been listening to both for a prolonged period of time and also had a session with sound engineering buddy Tim Harris. Tim has been listening to the amps solely on the Clips Cornwall Force and I have been listening to them using both the very effective Cornwall Force as well as my normal reference speakers. The speaker cable used was a set of Inacoustic Reference Air 2404s. Both speaker sets are very good at revealing even subtle differences in the connected gear. Please uh, take note that I really don't have so many preferences based on intimate, prolonged listening sessions with tube amps. So my impressions will naturally be weighted against my experience with other types of amplifiers as I don't have a tube reference amplifier in this price class to lean against. With the Manly Stingray 2 on the bench, my initial first reaction was, whoa. This is tubey. As the Stingray added a lot of what I call tube sheen to the sound. When fully warmed up, it was actually even more. It's a very romantic sounding haze almost that suits certain music very well, but certainly not all, where I found it to be a bit distracting at times. To me, music felt less engaging and I missed some of that immediate bite. By haze, I mean the fatty softness that this construction brings to the party. I also experimented with the triode and ultralinear modes and even though the ultralinear mode has a bit more beefy character, I prefer the triode mode which felt more intimate and detailed. Power was really never an issue on the Cornwalls. That can go crazy loud even with the modest 1821 this thing ray delivers in triode mode. With the much less effective SBR1s, you adapt the listening levels, and for any moderate listener, you would not miss more power the majority of time, unless in a big room or sitting far away from the speakers. The Stingray provides a good sense of soundstage and felt very at ease. I found the significant tubiness of the Stingray to be a little fatiguing on the Cornwall Falls, but not at all to the same degree on the SBR once, where it was like the silky top end character of these speakers kind of smooths the rather excessive tubiness out quite a bit, uh, making it feel like a better match than the Cornwalls, which was a total surprise to me. Eager to listen to the i50 in comparison, I moved the cables and ran through the same playlist with the i50. The first impression was a clearer and more confident presentation with less subjective tube saturation that made me wonder if the bias might be off on the brand new factory seal stingray. Therefore, I completed a full bias check, finding a couple of tubes being off by 20 to 30 millivolts. After that, I carried out the same listening test again, but could only detect a very subtle difference in the subjective sound. Certain types of music sits more at ease with intense uh, tube coloring, while other genres don't benefit the same way to my ears. After longer periods of listening, too much tube coloring leads to listening fatigue. When it came to sound staging, I found the Stingray 2 to offer a beautiful and very deep sound stage that could not be quite matched by the i50. The Stingray also presents a bigger sounding bass. In my test setup, I found it too fatty sounding, which again was beneficial to some music actually. From the Sonic Snacks playlist, the Stingray, for example, portrays Van Morrison's Whenever God Shines His Light from the Avalon Sunset album very nicely. It's a pretty tight mix that can sound a bit lean on some systems. The track got rounded off just right hearing it on my reference speakers. Whenever God shines a light on me Open up my eyes so I can see When I look up in the darkest night Then I know everything is gonna be alright I love the saturation on horn-heavy tracks, on tracks with edgy vocals like Shaka Khan's Angel from the 2007 Funk This album.
Every time I heard crooners from the day and age of the tube, I just felt... Overall, in this setup, it was the Audio Research i50 sound I found the most balanced of the two. Testing the headphone outputs with a pair of analytical Sennheiser HD 800s were quite a blessing on the Stingray, where the tubey tubiness is a perfect match, presenting a sound on the HD 800 that was super smooth and very pleasant to listen to. I was A-being with the Yamaha C5000 built-in headphone amp and really preferred the sound with the Manly on these cans. The i50 headphone output sounds like an afterthought in the design of the i50. In comparison with the Manly and the C5000, words like dull and uninspiring comes to mind. During the review, it becomes clear that both amps have their pros and cons. So let me try to conclude on the subjective sound experience first. The i50 came across to me as beefier, clearer, punchier and overall less tubey sounding than the Stingray. Interestingly, I found it to have a bigger lead to the Manly on the Cornwall Force than when compared on the SBR once, where I actually found myself spending more listening time with the Manly. When it came to the sound of the headphone outputs using the analytical Sennheiser HD 800, the Manly blasted everything else out of the water in terms of sound experience. If you like that perfect tube sound that is deliciously pleasing and removes all evil from this world. Especially the i50 headphone output felt underwhelming. What you would prefer is definitely up to your sound preferences and speaker combo as they are distinctively different with the Stingray probably being the most romantic sounding which uh, could be great for shorter listening sessions but fatigue me during longer listening sessions especially with genres outside its absolute mastery. When it comes to the daily use and functionality, it's the Stingray that wins me over. The click-free professional insert functionality, the RF remote and the distinctive design and user checkable biasing makes it the machine I would probably have most fun with in the long run as a second system. But if I could only pick one, it would be the i50 for the more competent, all-round, beefier sound. I also like the pass-through feature that would allow you to use a streamer with preamp functionality in the background, giving you app-controlled volume with your favorite streaming platform, while at the same time allowing you to have a tactile experience with a turntable and vinyl on Sundays using the i50 as an integrated amplifier. The thousand euro less also makes it the bargain of the two. What is right for you, only your needs and sound profile can decide. To me, the Stingray won my heart and brought the sound on my headphones, while the i50 won my ears on speakers, as well as being the one I would point at for the interior design aware person with its colors and modules. So now, Stand by for the pros, the cons, and please do help the almighty YouTube algorithm getting smarter by tapping that like and subscribe buttons. And remember to just listen. <laughs>